Hello and welcome back. This is Christopher Aaron, the iGold Advisor channel. It is June 19th, 2024. A slow day today in the markets because it is the Juneteenth holiday. So I thought we would do a special broadcast. The gold and silver mining sector versus the rest of the U.S. economy. The metals themselves look very healthy here. And I know we have a lot of investors who are also interested in in the gold and silver miners. So I want to do a comparison of these two asset classes, the mining sector versus the broader US economy. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when these videos come out on YouTube. If you have a moment to give it a thumbs up, I would very much appreciate that. It really helps out these algorithms here. And last but not least, make sure to follow our X or Twitter feed at iGlobalGold. Sometimes I post free updates there during the middle of the week when I don't have a chance to post here on YouTube. All right, let's get into this update. And I do want to say congratulations to anyone in Boston or New England, Boston Celtics, championship number 18. I grew up in the 80s watching Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish. And it was super exciting to see uh, this championship here. So there we go. All right, let's get into this update. Legal disclaimer, one moment. And this is going to be the big one for today. Now, let me walk you through what we're looking at here and the ramifications of this. We are looking at the XAU. This is an index that is very similar to the GDX. It is a large cap gold and silver mining index. It's an average of about 30 different mining companies. And the reason why I use the XAU index versus the GDX is that this has data going all the way back to 1984. Whereas the GDX only began to trade in 2006. So we have a lot more data, they're functionally the similar index. Um, and we're looking at the ratio of the gold mining sector as represented by this XAU index compared to the rest of the US economy. And to do that, we're using the S&P 500. So it's simply a ratio, you can look up here, the XAU divided by the S&P 500, XAU, SPX. Okay. 1984 to present. So this is all of the available data. And the key points that I want to draw to your attention, first of all, right down here. Look at the level that this ratio hit in the year 2000 when gold bottomed. And remember that gold bottomed in 2000 at $250 per ounce. Simultaneously, silver bottomed at about $4 per ounce. Let's use gold here for, for perspective. So gold bottomed at $250 per ounce. Remember that right here. That's this level, 0 0.03 on the ratio. Now take a look at this level right here. This was a multi-year peak in the price of gold. This was actually about a 10-year peak in 2011 when gold hit $1,900 per ounce, this ratio peaked at a level of 0 0.2. Now I'm going to tell you what these ratios mean here in one second, but before I do that, what I wanna to draw to your attention is that the current level, the current level of this ratio is below where it was in the year 2000 when gold was trading at $250 per ounce. So right now, this moment as we are speaking, even though gold is trading at above $2,300 per ounce, in other words, it's $2,000 above the level that it hit here in 2000 for physical gold, the gold miners are actually trading below the valuations that they were trading at in the year 2000 when we're comparing them to the rest of the US economy. This is how unloved and frankly hated the entire precious metals sector is. And we can really see that reflected in the valuations 
of the gold and silver miners. Now, what you want to do as an investor is not say, oh, woe is me, woe is us, you know, this sector is so unloved. You want to look at that as an opportunity. You want to be a contrarian and say, hey, if, if the majority of investors around the world are currently valuing this XAU, the average of all the large cap gold and silver companies, less than what they were valued at here when gold was $250 per ounce, this represents an opportunity for us at this point. And so let me give it in numerical terms. For example, if this ratio from where it stands right now at 0.025 were to simply get back here to where it was at a previous peak, we're talking the 2011 gold peak. Remember, physical gold is already above this level, but the miners are not. If the miners were to get back to a previous peak level, as in 2011, the simple math is that this would represent an average gold miner to increase by 700% in value. To get from 0.025 up to 0.2 is a 700% increase in the average gold and silver miner, let alone the good gold and silver miners. Remember, this is an average of all the 30 in this basket. So it would either represent that increase in the gold miners or it would represent the stock market itself falling by a massive 87.5%. So one or some combination of these would need to happen in order for the ratio to get from where it is right now, 0.025, back to a former peak level like we saw in the year 2011. So it would be massive outperformance by the average gold or silver miner. Again, the better gold and silver miners would perform better than the average. Or it would be basically an outright collapse in the stock market. One or both of those. Just to get back to this level. Okay. Now that's pretty impressive. However, right here in 2011, we're simply talking about this 0.2 level on the index. Go back and look with me right here in 1984 and notice, now we only have data for this index going back to 1984, but I've parsed this out and I've looked at some of the constituent uh, mining companies, such as the ones, uh, such as Newmont Mining, such as Hecla, that are in this index. However, the index itself didn't exist in the year 1980. But when I parse out the individual constituents, I will tell you that this index approached one-to-one -one XAU to S&P 500. I mean, right here in 1984, you can see that it hit 0.875, close enough. If we were to go back to the year 1980, it literally hit one-to-one. -one. And so the math... If this index was going to get back to how the gold and silver miners, this is not pie in the sky fabrication. This is not like, you know, I'm pulling some number out of a hat. This is what the gold and silver mining sector was worth in the year 1980. And we know 1980 was a significant peak. And so what I'm saying is it does not look, if you look at this ratio right here, it does not look like we are at a significant peak right now. I mean, 2011 was a significant peak. 1980 was a significant peak. Does this look like a significant peak to you? I don't know. It doesn't to me. So the simple math, if this ratio was going to get back to the 1980 peak level, it would represent an average increase in 4,000% for that gold miner or the U.S. stock market to absolutely collapse by 97.5%. It also could be a blend of either of these two happening simultaneously. So this is the simple math. I'm not making up the data here. I'm not cherry picking anything. This is all of the available data. Remember, this index starts in 1984. And you can simply see where we are trading right now, 0.025, and where this index traded at previous peaks, the 2011 peak in gold and the 1980 peak in gold. And remember, gold itself 
is higher than both of these peaks right now, but the mining sector is so unloved that it is not back to any of these levels. One final point here, remember, a ratio, such as what we were looking at, a ratio between real asset classes cannot go to zero. It is impossible for it to go to zero. This is one of the few things that we can say with 100% certainty. A ratio between real asset classes, you know, for example, if we were talking about the ratio between uh, silver and gold, that cannot go to zero because it would imply that silver is worth zero relative to gold. In the same way here, this ratio cannot go to zero because it would imply that the gold and silver mining sector is worth zero relative to the rest of the U.S. economy. And that cannot happen. The gold mining sector has been around for 5,000 years, according to the data that we have when we look back at biblical records, we look back at records from uh, you know, Mesopotamia and Babylon. Uh, gold mining goes back for 5,000 years and it has never been worth zero. This is the lowest valuation that has ever existed in all of available data that we have. And so if you look at this and you're saying, well, at 0.025, this cannot go to zero. Yes, it can continue to grind lower. It can bump along these lows for a while, but it can't go to zero. And it certainly can go to one of these former peak levels as an example. When you think about the reward versus the risk in the gold and silver mining sector right now, I would say it is absolutely gargantuan, and the data supports that. So this is why I'm involved in the sector. This is why I spend a lot of time researching gold and silver miners. This is why I follow the sector so closely. When we are back at one of these former levels, I will not be investing in this sector. I'll be telling people, hey, it's time to sell. But we are clearly not at one of these former peak levels. So there's the data from a reward to risk perspective. You can see that this sector is extremely undervalued. And think back to the analysis from silver from the last few weeks. If silver's getting ready to take off here within the next couple of weeks, back to that 40 to $50 level, you better believe that's going to represent a moment where this ratio could start moving back to some of the former levels. If you would like to invest alongside of us in the exact gold and silver miners that we are investing in here, along with all of the research to back that up, as well as the flash updates that go right to your inbox, when we buy or when we sell an individual mining company, the service for you is called Precious Metals Intelligence Plus. You get those exact buy and sell decisions. Not only that, you get premium weekly members-only videos, just like you're seeing right now, but much more in-depth. The next one goes out tomorrow. We cover not only the mining sector, but also what's happening in physical gold, physical silver. We do cover Bitcoin when it's relevant. We cover the U.S. stock market, the U.S. dollar, and the currencies, and other commodities. This is called Precious Metals Intelligence Plus. You cannot afford to be without a reliable source of data-based research in this cycle. If you are a higher net worth investor, you have to understand the power of private placements. These private placements, we invest in similar mining companies as here in Precious Metals Intelligence Plus, but you get even more upside because you receive free warrants with every single investment that you are making. So you get nearly twice the upside for free when you join us in elite private placements. Remember, you also receive a free subscription to Precious Metals Intelligence Plus so you don't miss anything that's happening in the metals or the other markets that we do cover. And we will have a new silver private placement coming within the next week or so. I will make an announcement here when that is available, but it is with a high leverage silver mining company that I'm very excited about. If you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, know that you can book a consultation. We sit down for 30 or 60 minutes, however long is appropriate. I also do email consultations, just so you know. 
if you would like an independent perspective on your situation. And remember that I do not take any fees or kickbacks from any of the companies or any of the Boolean dealerships that we discuss. I am 100% dedicated to assisting individual investors to navigate these markets. So that is the ratio, the XAU to S&P 500 ratio. Think about that for a moment. Think about from a contrarian perspective where the value is right now. Is it in chasing the S&P 500, NVIDIA, Tesla, Facebook, these, these meme stocks? Or is it in the sector that is really being overlooked by most investors right now, the gold and silver mining sector? 